Hello students, welcome to my channel Learning History Made Easy. In today's video, we will be seeing the political science topic Hindrances to the National Development. Before going into the video, if anyone is seeing the channel for the first time or if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and share it with your friends and also click the bell button to receive notifications whenever I upload new videos. So without wasting time, let us get into the video. So as I have told, today's video is about hindrances to the national development. So the first hindrance, poverty. Large sections of our society live in villages and their major occupation is agriculture. So in India, a large section of our society live in villages and their major occupation is agriculture. They rely upon monsoon which is quite irregular and hence the output is very low. So usually a farmer or a person doing agriculture rely maximum upon monsoon or rainfall. And because the rainfall is quite irregular, the output is low. As a result, more than 1 by 5th of the total population is living below the poverty line. And poverty denies the access to good health, sanitation, basic infrastructure, etc. So, major majority of our population depends on agriculture. Agriculture rely on monsoon and because monsoon is irregular, the problem is production becomes low. When production becomes low, the people more than 1 by 5th of the total population live below the poverty line. And this results in uh, denial of access when they have poverty, when they face poverty, they are denied access to good health, they don't get proper sanitation, basic infrastructure, etc. So that is the first point which is a hindrance to the national development that is poverty. Now let us move on to the uh, second point that is population explosion. Census reports of 2011 prove that India is overpopulated. So according to the census of 2011, India is overpopulated. Population explosion leads to unemployment, shortage of food and other basic amenities. As a result of population explosion, what are problems we face? We face unemployment, shortage of food, shortage of basic amenities, etc. So, population explosion also is a hindrance to the national development. So, that is the second point. Now, the third point is regional imbalance. All the regions of our country are not evenly developed. So, in, if you take uh, the situation of our country, all the regions or all the states are not evenly or equally developed. This, needs to, this leads to separatist tendencies that curbs national development. So, in this situation, it leads to a separatist tendency. One is developed, one is not developed, one is developing. So, this leads to a separatist tendency and this also curbs or this also is a hindrance to national development. Example, Marathwada and Vidarbha in Maharashtra, Northeastern regions and Gorkahil areas, etc. So, regional imbalance also is a hindrance to national development. Now, uh, the fourth point, social and political disturbances. In India, social and political disturbances have become common in recent years causing tension. So, in India, we have a lot of social and political disturbances. This have become a common uh, issue in recent years and this causes a lot of tensions. Some examples in Assam, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, etc. have become communally sensitive states. Communal issues have increased in states like Assam, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, etc. Caste conflicts, terrorism, interstate conflicts, etc. have also affected nations march towards development. Other than uh, communal issues, there are issues like caste conflicts, terrorism, interstate conflicts. All these issues have uh, affected the nations march towards development and this also is a hindrance to national development that is social and political disturbances. The next point is political crisis. 
The coalition politics and the emergence of too many political parties, regional and sectarian feelings have created political crisis in many occasions. So regarding the uh, politics, the coalition politics or the emergence of too many political parties, regional sectarian feelings, all these have created political crisis or problems in many occasions. The vested interests have prevented the parliament and state legislature to enact necessary laws for the development of nations. So the vested or the diverse interests have prevented the parliament and state legislature to enact the necessary laws for development of nation. So all these five points are the hindrances to national development that is political crisis social and political disturbance, regional imbalance, population explosion and poverty. All these are the hindrances to national development. Now let us see the remedies, how these hindrances can be solved. What are the remedies or solutions? The first solution or the first remedy is political stability. See, the government elected by the people has to continue for a full term so that they can adopt and implement the policies for development. So, the uh, government elected by the people has to continue for a full term so that they can adopt or they can implement the policies of development. Frequent changes in government result in slow development and political uncertainty. So when there is frequent or continuous changes in the government that leads to slow development and political uncertainty. So there should be stability and the government elected by the people should complete its full term. So political stability is the first remedy. The second one selection of priorities. See, the government has to choose the area of priority necessary for nation building. So, it is a duty of the government to choose priority which is important, which is more important and which is less important. So, that priority has to be done and they have, when they are choosing and choose the areas of priority for nation building. These priorities are to be decided on the basis of needs of the people. How do the government uh, decide or uh, choose or have priority based on the needs of the people. Infrastructure, education, transport, agriculture, health service etc. may be accorded priorities for national development. So, um, the uh, fields like infrastructure development, education, agriculture, transport, health, all these may be given more priority for the development of nation. So, the second point or the second remedy is selection of priorities. Now the third one, implementation of uh, plans, effective implementation of plans. Since April 2012, the 12th five-year plan is under progress. So we have five-year plans. So since April 2012, the 12th five-year plan is under progress. To so fill the gap of the previous plans, it is aimed at channelizing the sources and implementing effectively. So the gaps in between the plans have to be filled and to fill the gaps of the previous plans, it is aimed at channelizing the sources and implementing effectively. The plans have to be implemented effectively. So that is the third remedy, effective implementation of plans. Now the fourth one, mixed economy. Public and private partnership not only strengthens the economy but also contributes for its sustenance. So the next remedy is to uh, what, uh, have a partnership that is public and private partnership, a mixed economy. This strengthens the economy and it also contributes for its sustenance. The contribution of private enterprises have been phenomenal in economic front. So if you see the contribution of private enterprises, it is noteworthy or it is phenomenal in the economic front. Example, Tata, Wipro, Infosys and others have not only generated employment but also contributed for the economic progress. So the mixed economy is another solution for uh, the development of nation. Now the fifth one, implementation of directive principles of state policy. Part 4 of the Indian constitution emphasizes the establishment of socio-economic democracy through the adoption of revolutionary policies. 
so um, according to the part 4 of indian constitution it emphasizes the establishment of a socio economic democracy and how this socio economic democracy can be established through the adoption of revolutionary policies now concentration of wealth in few hands is an obstacle for the development of scheduled caste and scheduled tribe so when the wealth is concentrated in the hands of a few people that becomes a hindrance for the development of minorities like scheduled caste and scheduled tribes hence the implementation of directive principles of state policy is necessary at this juncture so because of this the uh, uh, implementation of the directive principles of state policy is very important or it is necessary so that is the fifth point implementation of directive principles of state policy now the next uh, remedy is role of civil society in india civil society organizations are playing an important role in nation building they are fighting against the political and administrative corruption red tapism anti people policy etc so in india the role of civil society organizations are very important they are playing a very important role in nation building and what are they doing they are fighting against many political and administrative corruptions red tapism anti people policy etc these activities need to be strengthened to hasten the process of national development so all these activities of civil society have to be strengthened and that will help in the national development and nation building is a long and challenging process it is not a very easy process or it is not a short term process it is a long process and it is a challenging process so all these are the remedies for nation building that is role of civil society implement implementation of directive principles of state policy mixed economy effective implementation of the plans then selection of priorities and political stability so today we have studied the hindrances uh, for the national development and also the remedies how to solve these hindrances now let us see some question answers regarding today's video and the previous video the first question what is a nation state the people of the common religious and traditional background living in a definite territory with like mindedness we feeling and enjoying political importance form the nation so nation state the people of a common religious and traditional background they are living in a definite territory and they have like mindedness we feeling and they are enjoying political independence they form a nation next what is nationality common language culture and history aspirations help the people to form nationality they have common language culture and history and aspirations and that forms nationality what is nation building the third question nation building is a process of uniting people with a sense of nationalism in a simple words nation building is a process of uniting people with a sense of nationalism and it's it aims at building of national power national institutions achieving development in different fields national reconstruction and all round development the fourth question which treaty initiated the process of a nation state treaty of westphalia 1648 when did the treaty of westphalia sign the process of nation state that is 1648 which country is described as a land of cultural diversity india is a country which is considered as a land of cultural diversity which country is uh, described as a land of ethnicity africa is described as a land of ethnicity mention any one hindrance of nation building we have studied almost five hindrances any one you can write so poverty is a hindrance for nation building write any one of the remedies for nation building again we have learned many remedies any one they have asked so political stability is one of the remedy for nation building write a definition of nation building nation building is a wide ranging process to build a viable cohesive well organized and widely acceptable society it is the definition of myron vena regarding nation building now the next question what is good governance 
Good governance ensures accountability, transparency, efficiency, responsibility and responsiveness. Good governance means it ensures accountability, transparency, efficiency, responsibility and responsiveness. Explain the various components of nation building. It uh, is explained in the last video. You can see the points there. Explain the major hindrances of nation building. Five hindrances I have explained in this video. That is the answer. Now discuss the hindrances and remedial measures of nation building. All the points explained in today's video. First you have to write about the hindrances. Points you write and then explain. Then remedies. Points you write and you have to explain the remedies also. So all these are the important questions. So I hope you have understood this topic very clearly. In case of any doubts you can ask in the comment section. And please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Your likes and shares will be of a great encouragement for me to make more and more videos. I hope to see you all soon in the coming video. Thank you for watching.